As they widen their ranges, the last days of October can be a difficult time to hunt a specific buck on a small farm. With less sign of the big deer, Jared Mills decides to focus his energy elsewhere. On the morning of October 30th, Jared is deep on the peninsula of the river farm, hoping to catch one of its mature bucks cruising the bedding area in search of the first hot doe. It's a nice chilly morning here. It's October 30th, and we're back on Mike and I's farm. Grant and I came in and hung a new set this morning in the dark, but we're finally in and set up, and while we're getting uh, everything put up in the tree, we had a, a pretty solid buck cruise by us. It's great weather. There's more snow coming later today. So I wanted to get back deep in the cover and uh, just expect some cruising buck movement, hopefully well into the morning back here. Our main target is Merino. I'm excited to see how it goes. We plan on hanging in quite a while this morning. about to get down and grab some food and get back in the stand for the afternoon hunt. Probably gonna hunt on the other end of the farm. That was a good morning, final tally of six bucks, six cruising bucks. That last one sure looked like a mature deer to me, uh, but I don't recognize them, which is not very common to not recognize a deer on this property, but a cool encounter nonetheless. We're gonna get packed up and see if we can sneak out of here. Jared's hunt on the peninsula was full of pre-rut activity including a new mature buck, but none of his targets came past. That same morning while hunting in Wisconsin 300 miles to the northeast, team member Elliot Schellpfeffer also experiences increased buck action. Take him when you're ready.
Hawkins. I think I just smoked Big Mature. I don't know if he's a nine or a ten or what, but he's really nice. We've had a ton of pictures of him right here, but there's a scrape not even ten yards. And he's been hitting that constantly. <laughs> we knew he had to get back in here this morning. It's been good in here in the morning, so we've been seeing a lot of deer. And all of a sudden I seen one nice buck coming. And Elliot was full draw on him. Uh, he decided not to shoot him. He might be a three-year-old. So he got the pass. And the buck we called Barb's was 10 seconds back. <coughs> I can't even talk. 10 seconds behind him. And two does came from over here. And they just, they let him absolutely perfect. He, they walked. I mean, I shot him at maybe eight yards. And I think I absolutely smoked him. We didn't hear him crash, but I... I'm almost totally confident that that's, that's going to be a kill shot because I think I absolutely smoked him. Oh, I see him. <laughs> He's laying right there. There he is. There he is. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get him. Look at the bubbles. Here he is. And honestly, if you probably look, you can probably see the stand from where we are. He maybe went 40, 50 yards. Went through a little bit of a little bit of water there, jumped a barbed wire fence, and here he lays. And I couldn't be happier. It's an awesome deer, awesome morning, October 30th in Wisconsin. Doesn't get much better than this. Very thankful. Elliot's and Jared's hunts are good examples of how productive late October can be. With snow in the forecast for this evening, our expectations are high. However, these hopes are disappointed as Jared, Josh, and me all have slower than expected hunts. Overnight, our world is once again transformed as another layer of white covers everything. On the morning of Halloween, team member Matt Tatey takes a shot at his top buck in this wintry landscape. shelter back in here so um, let's have to see how it goes here but um, still on the quest for the old split g3 we'll see who shows up first eight does come through here and, and a couple of them are bedded here to the north and about four or five bucks cruise on through so split g2 that's pretty cool deer um, hoping that he sticks around and makes another year and hopefully we can get a crack at split g3 or broken beam here before the season's over matt looks ahead to november now when his long-awaited vacation will start the buck he calls Split G3 will be at the top of his list. While Matt has a solid hunt, that isn't my experience in Northern Iowa. I have a slow morning followed by an even slower evening. But with the breathtaking views I can't complain, I am sitting in the most beautiful stand in Iowa. Jared Mills is also out on this final evening of October, again hunting the big deer under these new conditions. His hunt also ends in disappointment observing zero deer for the second hunt in a row on this farm.
Despite October's final day delivering disappointment, the month as a whole has been incredible. This October is the best we've ever experienced. Cold fronts piled up one after another. We tagged multiple bucks and harvested a year's worth of memories as well. But now the traditional month of preparation is over. Now it is playoff time. Go big or go home. It is the part of the season for which we have all been waiting. It is finally November. Sweet November, it's here and it's hard to believe. We're set up on Mike and I's farm in a really cool spot back in the peninsula. Uh, we haven't hunted this stand since 2017. We've already had a little bit of action. Uh, while we were getting set up, we had a spike come through, but shortly after that, that big four-year-old that we passed the last time we were hunting in here came by too. He was chasing the doe a little bit. But as you can see, we got some nice snow from yesterday, making it a lot easier to see throughout this peninsula, see deer moving through. Once again, the primary target is Merino. He's historically spent a lot of time moving through this little block over my right shoulder. So just hoping we can lay our eyes on for the first time this year. is on that doe hard. He keeps stopping to run off another buck. That doe's still right here. Right, it's about 8.45 right now. And it's been a fun morning. I'm sure we haven't even captured half of it on video just because we get quick glimpses of deer running around, but there's just chasing all over. We haven't seen any real big deer yet. There's another one, but uh, a lot of solid bucks just running around like crazy. Just, you can't ask for anything better for November 1st. I love seeing this. This is kind of one of those spots where we can probably sit in here quite a while and see deer movement most of the morning and into midday so as long as they keep moving we're gonna stick it out to ring in the new month Mike Reed goes back after the fat old buck he calls Sherman as in Sherman tank what's well, Friday November 1st, sweet November is finally here. Couldn't ask for a more beautiful morning. We're back out on this uh, Sherman farm. And we're in a new spot. This is the first time I have a southwest wind on this farm. We've been hunting a lot of north winds. It's an old uh, cattle pasture, a draw through an old cattle pasture that's really grown up with a lot of little uh, brush and trees. And it's between two of the cameras that I've been getting pictures of Sherman on. We've actually had pictures of him just up the way here near the uh, standing corn. And then up on the point right here, we're about a hundred yards away from it. When I scouted this spot, this tree looked like it'd be a little bit easier to get in. It's got great cover, that's why I wanted to get in it, but uh, it took us a while. We got in a little after daylight by the time I finished hanging the set. But we're all trimmed out and ready to go. It's, uh, it's not perfect, but I am excited about the spot. We'll see what happens.
Mike has great action, and as we rejoin Jared Mills, his luck is also set to change. in here for lack of a better term I mean I, I don't know if the video is gonna do it justice but Grant and I have our heads have been on a swivel all morning deer running everywhere that's a buck that we were calling Andrew Luck didn't expect him to see back see him back here but I mean he's down 60 yards away he came running through too quick earlier I didn't know if we were gonna get another chance luckily he came back Man, that's awesome. What a morning. November 1st. All the snow on the ground. That was fun. Yes, sir. The batteries. I can get the batteries. That's unbelievable, dude. I could see it when you were filming. I could see the battery, like, no bars left. I'm like, this is not good time. <laughs> He's right under this tree, I think. It just blends in with the sticks. <laughs> it's gonna be an easy track job with this snow. One we saw him go down, but it's a lot thicker on the ground than it is in the tree, so I don't know exactly where he's laying, but you can just see the blood everywhere already. 
look at the range of blood. There's like, it's like a seven foot swath. There's our buck. Man, you gotta love November. Grant and I have hunted hard throughout the entire month of October. And all we needed was that calendar to flip a page and we were able to put a buck on the ground November 1st. And what a morning it was. Just your classic cold November rut morning. This deer was actually a surprise when he first showed up on camera this summer. To our knowledge, Mike and I don't have any history with him, but we were getting him very regularly in velvet this summer and late into the summer too. And then after he shed his velvet, we were still getting some pictures and we thought we were gonna have a really good chance at him early season and we thought we had a good setup for him. But then he just disappeared and we weren't getting any pictures of him. I, like I said, I can't say it enough, just your typical November rut morning, bucks chasing, uh, cruising, just nonstop action late into the morning and having mature deer um, come in to cap it off. It's just hard to beat that. So this is my first buck on my farm, my first time using a landowner buck tag, so that's pretty cool. Now it's time to focus on the big deer and uh, also try to get Grant his first Iowa buck. So that's what we're going to spend our time doing. Obviously a lot of good hunting left ahead of us. So it's uh, hopefully just the beginning of, of a fun ride. November's here uh, and it feels good to have a buck on the ground. All we needed was that calendar to flip a page and we were able to put a buck on the ground November 1st. And what a morning it was, just your classic cold November rut morning. Let's have to see how it goes here, but um, still on the quest for the old split G3. Our vacation starts next week. Hopefully we can uh, get a chance to see something here. Here he lays, and I couldn't be happier. It's an awesome deer, awesome morning. Doesn't get much better than this. Very thankful. We just got word from Jared that he shot Andrew Luck on our farm. I'm really pumped up. I want to get over there and, and help him track it up and take a look at it. Despite the great action, Mike now fears that the buck he is after, Sherman, is no longer on the farm. So as soon as he hears the news of Jared's success, he climbs down to share in the celebration. That makes two great bucks in one week on the river farm. It would be hard to top that action but there are still at least two more mature bucks on the farm to keep Mike and Jared busy during the rut-filled weeks ahead. Jared's great buck reminds us why we've waited an entire year for the calendar page to turn. Despite the oncoming rut, Josh Sparks has another slow hunt on the public land, but Josh is heartened when he gets a call from a friend who has just taken a great buck. The time is obviously right, but this is only the beginning. It is just the first morning of what is sure to be the best month of the year. It is the time when we take the long-awaited vacation and put all our plans into action. Now we find out if those weeks of scouting, days of food plot work, and months of dreaming will actually pay off. This is it. We are finally chasing November.